The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. This is Grace in Focus, and we welcome you to this podcast broadcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. Israel as a nation has rejected Christ, but God is not done with them. He will fulfill His promises to them. But for now, God is working through the church. We will continue today in Romans chapter 9 with Ken Yates and Catherine Wright. By the way, the Grace Evangelical Society is starting an online seminary that will be free for all who maintain at least a B average. You can earn an MDiv degree. The email for more information and to register is gesclass at yahoo.com. I will repeat this and give you a little more information at the end of today's discussion, which starts right now. Here are Ken and Catherine. And so we're in Romans chapter 9. One of the things we mentioned is that some may listen to Paul or may have listened to Paul when he was speaking and thought that he did not have a high view of the nation of Israel. Because if you read chapters 1 through 8 of Romans, he says, the law of Moses will not justify you. Mm -hmm. You can only be justified by faith. Then in chapters 7 and 8, he says, the law won't sanctify you either. You don't live by the law. Well, if somebody's hearing that, they'll say, Paul's like anti-Semite. You know, he's an anti-Semite or something. He he, he doesn't like the Jews. Which would be kind of weird considering he was a Jew. That's right. (laughs) But obviously that's not the case here in Romans chapter 9. You can see that Paul starts off the chapter by talking about his love for the nation of Israel. Chapter 9, verse 1, he says, I tell the truth in Christ. And then in verse 2, I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. Here he's talking about the state of Israel in unbelief. Mm -hmm. They have rejected the Christ. And he knows that judgment is about to fall upon the nation. The wrath of God. That's exactly right, which (laughs) we're going to see in this Mm -hmm. chapter. It's not talking about hell. But the nation of Israel is under the judgment Mm -hmm. of God. He's heartbroken. I feel like, wow, there's just so much compassion in these verses where you see how heartbroken he is for his own countrymen. And the depth of that heartbreak is seen in verse Mm 3. And this has caused a lot of discussion where Paul says, I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for the sake of of his countrymen, his fellow Jews. So Paul was saying he would go to hell for them? That's what a lot of people (laughs) think. And obviously because of the way people understand the word accursed. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in seminary many years ago, I was taught that that's what Paul was saying. I don't love anybody that much, I'm going to be honest. That's (laughs) that's some serious love right there. (laughs) Particularly people who persecuted you. You This was a nation that was persecuting Paul. So what does Paul mean when he says, I would be willing to be accursed? The key to that is that the word accursed in the Bible never means cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. It's used in Galatians 1, 8, 9, and it's basically saying if anybody preaches a gospel other than the true one, right, that they would be cursed. So the idea is temporal judgment or... Not good stuff. So. Yes, that you <laughs> place yourself under the discipline mm-hmm. of God. Now, when Paul says here, a curse from Christ, probably what he has in mind is, I would be willing or I could pray mm-hmm. that I would be disciplined by God to such a degree that my fellowship, fellowship, not my eternal salvation, would be negatively impacted I wouldn't be close to the Lord. I would be under his judgment of some kind. Mm -hmm. And and that's what Paul means. Paul says, I I would be willing or I would pray that I would experience something like that if my fellow countrymen Mm -hmm. would believe. So in a sense, it's he's saying, I'd be willing to lay down my life as well, right? It may be his physical life. He's saying, I'd be willing to die if it would mean that the nation would would believe. Yes, and perhaps even I'd be willing to die out of fellowship with Christ, Mm -hmm. still saved. Mm -hmm. I like in in Zane Hodges' commentary, there's a footnote on this by John Niemela. He makes the comment when he says, for people who think this means hell, 
Paul would be contradicting himself because he knows he can't he can't go to hell. So that, that's a, one of the points of the book of Romans, that once you've been justified, you're justified forever. So there's no way Paul would say, oh, I wish that I could be cast into hell because that would be a denial of the core of his theology. What false teachings have come from this verse? I'm, I'm thinking maybe of some Catholic thoughts of purgatory even, right? Hey, I'd be willing to go to purgatory and pay for this other person's sin, the nation in this case. Well, I wonder if, if, if maybe, you know, all the uh, stories where people can sell their soul to the right. devil <laughs> or yeah, something like that. I don't like know that. if they would use this sure. or not, but that's clearly not what Paul means. Yeah. And then he goes on to say that the nation of Israel has been given many, many advantages versus four and five, that God has given him all these wonderful promises. But the question is, well, what happens now that as a whole, mm -hmm. the nation is unbelief or has rejected Christ? They do not believe in him after being given all these promises. Of course, those in replacement theology would say, well, God's done with them then. Mm -hmm. And Paul's going to argue in chapters 9, 10, 11, that's not the case uh, here in verse 6, he asks a question or he makes a statement. If the nation of Israel rejected the Christ and they do not believe as a whole, does that mean that the promises of God, the word of God, is of no effect? In other words, he's not going to do what he said for the nation of plan Israel. Plan A failed, so now he's moved on to plan B. Exactly, right. which is what replacement theology says, mm -hmm. that the church now is going to fulfill these promises, not literally, that was plan A, mm -hmm. but spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ is not going to reign upon the earth in Jerusalem. He reigns in heaven at the right hand of God the Father, mm -hmm. something like that. But what Paul points out, starting in verse 6, is that Israel is not simply made up of people who are descendants of Abraham physically. There is a spiritual aspect of Israel in the promises that were made. And when you read in verses 7 through 9, Paul talks about the children of promise, those who are Abraham's children. And Zane has a good discussion of this in his commentary. And basically, if I could summarize it, it is this. Not everyone who is a descendant of Abraham was used by God in this way, to bless the whole world. We think, for example, of Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Ishmael was a physical descendant of Abraham, but he was not the one through whom the world was going to be blessed. The Messiah was not going to come through him. He was not the promised son. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And just because not all descendants of Abraham believed in Paul's day, that doesn't mean that God's word is not going to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Let me just say something about this. Bob Wilkin just did a, a blog, right? I think so, yeah. On Ishmael. He did. This is not referring to people who are saved from hell. Mm -hmm. No, Paul is talking about the fact that not all of Abraham's descendants came from the one through whom the world was going to be blessed. He's talking, as you said at the beginning, corporately. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't look at this and say, oh, well, then Ishmael was not a believer. Ishmael was not saved. We're going to see the same thing with Esau. Isaac was the child of promise. Mm -hmm. He was the child of God in the sense that he came forth from a miraculous birth and the child of promise, which is connected to Genesis 12, 3, that in Abraham, one of his descendants, all the world was going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just physical descendancy that makes someone part of this program, program, mm -hmm. right? But it is those of promise. And if we're going to apply this to today, it would be believers today, those who make up the church, are the children of God and the part of this program through whom the whole world is going to be blessed. Yeah, again, I think I mentioned this in our last episode, but Zane used the word channel. This is the channel in which he was going to bring the Messiah through. It's a specific blessing, which I think fits into what he just said about, here are all the things that God specifically gave to the nation of Israel that were 
the covenants and, and the oracles of God, these were blessings that were specifically given to them. And I just also, a general observation in prepping for this was, He's saying that now in the church, the Gentiles have been grafted in. He's going to be talking about that. Well, if we're talking about salvation, individual salvation, then what you would have to argue is that Gentiles couldn't be saved prior to the church. Exactly. And so what do you do then with Rahab or Ruth? You know, are we just going to say that in the Old Testament, if you weren't born from a specific line of Abraham as well, going back to what you were just talking about, you had to be born through the line of Isaac, that just by virtue of being born Gentile, you were incapable of being saved. Yeah, and what we're going to see in this chapter is that God chooses certain people through whom mm -hmm. he's going to work, or if you want to use the word channel, yeah. or if you want to use the word, he's going to bless the world. We see that in Isaac. And just because God didn't choose Ishmael has no bearing on whether Ishmael was a believer or not. God chose Isaac through whom he was going to bless the world, through whom he was going to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant, mm -hmm. the one through whom the whole world would be blessed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see the same thing in our next podcast with Jacob and Esau, that God chooses one instead of the other. Esau, he hated. Yeah. Uh, we'll what does that talk, mean? We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, so yeah. come back. We hope you enjoyed this. And remember, keep, keep grace, grace in focus. focus. The Grace Evangelical Society is starting an online seminary where you can take specific classes or earn an MDiv degree. First Year Greek starts week of August the 6th. Many other classes start the week of August the 20th. Soteriology, Pastoral Ministry, Survey of the Old Testament, Bible Study with Logos Bible Software, Theology Proper, Pneumatology, and Christology. If you're interested, we need to hear from you soon. For information or to register, please email us and let us know of your interest. GESclass at yahoo.com That's GESclass at yahoo.com. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials, but one of our popular options is our free ebooks on a range of subjects. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode of Grace in Focus, Ken and Catherine continue in Romans, Romans chapter 9, verses 10 through 13. Please join us. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.